Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Lord, as we just come around your word, Lord God, thank you that it nourishes us, it strengthens us, it builds us. Lord, that uh, as we read your word, Lord Jesus, we just become more familiar and understanding of you and what you've, who you are and what you've done for us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, we're just uh, returning back to our series, The Golden Thread of Grace, uh, which came out of uh, Luke 24 and 27 when Jesus was walking on the Emmaus road with some disciples and it says in 27 beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them in all the scriptures concerning himself wouldn't that have been amazing just to have Jesus basically (laughs) preaching to you about all the scriptures which would have been in the Old Testament by the way because the New Testament wasn't written or was being written as as they were walking and talking it out and um so uh, a, a good old um, theologian, Matthew Henry, who did a great commentary back in the 1700s, he called this the golden thread of grace that actually weaves its way through the Old Testament, uh, talking about Jesus. And so we've been going through Old Testament books. Um, we're going to uh, put it up so far where we're up to. And we looked in Genesis how Jesus is the Word. The Bible says that God spoke the Word and uh, and creation happens so when uh, Jesus the Holy Spirit and well the Father Son and the Holy Spirit are all there part of creation because the Spirit was hovering and God spoke and then there was creation uh, that he was the tree of life we saw in Cain and Abel his blood speaks uh, we saw in Noah no Noah is the first time you see uh, the word grace uh, in Abraham actually uh, with, I think we're going to talk a bit about Abraham today, but uh, he, he actually um, uh, physically was with Abraham at least five times. That's why in the New Testament, Jesus says um, that Abraham saw my day and he was glad. And they said, well, how can that be? You're not even 50 years old. And then he says, as Abraham is, I, I am basically saying, well, it wasn't only Abraham, I saw it was Moses as well. And so that's why they wanted to stone him. And so he took it. They're like, oh, you that you couldn't have been there he goes well I'll take it another level I was there with Moses too <laughs> and so uh, so uh, in Exodus we looked at um, Moses the Passover baptism um, the bread of life uh, the water the law all things relating to Jesus Leviticus the sacrifice and offerings here's our high priest about the day of atonement the feast of Israel how they all point to Jesus and the year of Jubilee in numbers we looked at the camp of Israel which was fascinating because the way they camped was in the shape of a cross. And so when Balaam was supposed to go up there on the hill and curse them, he, he saw the cross and so he couldn't curse them, he could only bless them, uh, which was just uh, amazing. And um, we saw about Jesus in the promised land, the rock that was struck in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy that he is the prophet like Moses and he is the curse removed. Um, Amazing thing, you know, when, you, you, when you're reading the New Testament, it's so many times quoting the Old Testament, it's really good to go back to the Old Testament where that quote was from, because it gives you a fuller understanding. You know, when, when it says, cursed is he who hangs on a tree, and Jesus Christ, you know, hung on a tree. And um, when you go back, you actually find that that was a miscellaneous law, which they very, very rarely used. And what they did is they would, uh, uh, there was a time when they killed five kings and then they actually hung them on trees to show them they were accursed of God. And, but they never, never once in the Old Testament did they actually put them on a tree to die. They'd actually, they would kill them, then they'd put them on a tree as, as a, basically to say, as an example. And so this was for them to ask for Jesus to be hung on a tree and to die that way was really outside the box using a miscellaneous law but was way outside the box. But they were trying to say as an example that he was cursed of God. And don't we know that he took the curse, amen? He took the curse in which all that's left is the blessing. Hallelujah. And then in Joshua, he, Jesus leads us into rest. Uh, he's the picture of the scarlet cord. He's the commander of the armies of the Lord and the cities of refuge. And then we just started into the book of Judges and we looked at how Jesus is our righteous judge. And this week we're going to look at the angel of the Lord. Now, when I started studying this, by the way, when I first started studying this 
through um, looking at the Emmaus Road and thought, well, that'd be a great series to do. I wonder how long that'd go for, maybe 12, 13 weeks. And, and um, I'm doing an overview because I actually have done this from Genesis through to Isaiah and there's about 63 sermons. And so, um, but the fascinating thing is that as I'm studying to see the types and shadows of Jesus, I came a, a, upon this thing called the angel of the Lord. And... Um, so let's have a look in Judges. So we're going to look at the angel of the Lord today from the Old Testament. Judges chapter 2 and verse 1. So who is the angel of the Lord? Then it says the angel of the Lord. If you've got a new King James Version or the King James Version, um, you'll see in this case it's got a capital A. So then it says, the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I led you from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Fascinating. Yeah, we, we, we know that, you know, God went ahead of the Israelites. There was the, the pillar of um, cloud. There was the pillar of fire and the cloud. And, but, but this is actually saying, that the angel of the Lord led them into Egypt and brought them into this land and said, I will never break my covenant with you. So you start asking the question, what is this angel that's saying I will never break the covenant with you? So what it is, uh, there are different things. Some scholars call this a theophany, which refers to the manifestation of the God-man. Some call it a Christophany, which is a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ. Justin Martyr, who was a Christian apologist in 100 AD, identified the angel of the Lord with the Logos in John 1.1. So what we're seeing here is that the angel of the Lord is actually none other than Jesus Christ. He actually came in human likeness and then eventually in the New Testament he came in human flesh. Amen? And when you start to study, yeah, we'll go through this today, it's absolutely amazing to realise that Jesus was there appearing to, to um, mankind right throughout the Old Testament. And what, what you're going to see as we go through this study, it's actually in a lot of cases of well-known stories that we actually already know. Now, you'll see the angel of the Lord um, other times in the Old Testament, the great thing about the, the New King James and the King James is that when it's Jesus, they identify it with a capital. It's in the, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the distinctive or definite article where it says the angel of the Lord and it's a capital A. If it's not Jesus, it's normally just a small A because there are other references to um, angels of the Lord, but they're not, they're not Jesus. Most of the times how you can pick up that it's Jesus, here's one way of picking it up, because this angel says, I made a covenant with you that I will never break. That's not going to be any angel, amen? Angels don't make covenants with us that they don't break. God does that, hey? The other way you can pick it up is that uh, in different times, they worship this angel. They actually build an altar to it or they worship to it. Now, who knows? Angels won't allow you to do that. John tried to do that. John uh, in Revelation tried to worship an angel and, and he said, no, don't worship me. I'm a servant like you. And so there are different ways that in the context that helps you to understand. Now, some people say, well, it, well, could that be God? Well, it couldn't be God because that wouldn't be true to Scripture because the Bible says no man has seen God. And so if this angel of God is actually having a conversation face to face, that wouldn't be God the Father because no man has seen God. Even they asked Jesus that. He actually claimed that. It wouldn't be the Holy Spirit because you never see in Scripture the Holy Spirit coming in human likeness. It's not what he does. He actually points to Jesus. So it really only leaves one person left, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? So uh, the angel, the word angel in the Old Testament Hebrew is the word malak, which actually means representative or, um, sorry, means messenger or representative from the root word meaning to dispatch as a deputy. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? God sent his deputy to us as a messenger for us. And, you know, the, the wonderful thing I love about this is that it really cements the Trinity because 
Um, the Holy Spirit's work is actually to point us to Jesus. Jesus' job is actually the mediator between God and men. Amen? That's what he did. When he came down here, he came on this earth to be a man so he could represent us. Now he's our high priest. Well, he was doing that right from day one. Amen? I'll go as far as saying that when God walked in the, in the garden with Adam and Eve, that was Jesus Christ, because he's the mediator between God and men. And if it was God, well, the Bible says no man has seen God face to face. And so I would go as far as to say that. Amen? That might um, upset your theology. I don't really know. But it actually, it actually stands true with who Jesus is, and it stands true with the word of God. Amen? Somebody challenged me with that and said, yeah, but God would have wanted to be with his creation. And, oh, but maybe that was after they sinned. I said, no, the Bible says no man has seen God face to face. That's an absolute statement. Amen? Hallelujah. Everyone's quiet in this Presbyterian church today. <laughs> um, the word malak in the Bible is translated as angel 111 times and as messenger 98 times. So... We're probably we're going to use the New King James because it, it actually um, helps us. So in Judges 2.1, it says, The one who led Egypt and swore to keep his covenant with Israel was the angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, the Malach of Yahweh. John Wesley, in Wesley's notes on Judges, acknowledges the fact that this angel was God. Christ, the angel of the covenant, often called the angel of the Lord, to whom the conduct of Israel out of Egypt into Canaan is frequently ascribed. Matthew Henry, who we talked about before, attributes the angel of the Lord in verse 1 as Christ himself, the son of the living God. So when the children of Israel were trapped by the Red Sea with the Egyptian army bearing down, in Exodus 14, 19, it says, The angel of the Lord who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went um, from before them and stood behind them. Amen? You know what that tells me? That Jesus Christ has got your front and he's got your back. <laughs> he goes before you, and when your enemy is coming from behind you, he, we don't need to turn and face the enemy because we know that he will actually go behind us and face the enemy for us. Amen? That's what he did for the children of Israel. That's what he still does today for you and I. You know, when the children of Israel camped, and we said it was in the shape of a cross, they actually camped all facing the tabernacle, all facing the presence of God. That means that they had their back exposed to the enemy. But if, they t if the enemy came at them and they turned to see the enemy, they had their back towards the presence of God. You know, while they were camped like that, there's no record of them ever being overrun by the enemy. Because while they kept their... We sang it this morning, turn your eyes upon Jesus. While they kept their eyes on Jesus, while they kept their eyes on the presence of God, God actually looked after their backs. Amen? It's still the same today. And I love this because as we start to get into this, we see Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen? What he did for the children of Israel, he still does for us today. The same Jesus that walked on this earth was walking with the children of Israel, looking after, protecting, and providing them. So, everyone pretty much here knows that I love the first mention principle. <laughs> first, so when is the angel of the Lord first mentioned? Well... Interesting enough, it's with a woman. Doesn't God love to turn up and actually you know, reveal himself to women first? He did it at the tomb. And it's actually with Hagar. So let's have a look in Genesis 16, 7 to 13. And uh, when Hagar had been um, sent out by um, uh, Sarah's hand handmaiden, and uh, she was out in the wilderness and then... In uh, Genesis 16, 7, it says, Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress, submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. 
You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man. We know that's, that's true. And every man's hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now look at her response. She says, she called him the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she says, I also here have seen him who sees me. She saw God. <laughs> But who did she see? She saw Jesus. Because <laughs> we know she couldn't have seen God the Father because Jesus said no one has seen the Father. So that's called El Roy, which means the God who sees me. I don't think that was just a philosophical thing. She was saying, he saw me and I saw him. <laughs> I physically actually saw him. So we know it's not God the Father. One, it's John 1 to 18 that tells us no one has seen God. And John 6, 46 says, No one has seen the Father except he who is from God. And we know it's not the Holy Spirit. So, what about Abraham? Well, Abraham had the Lord appeared to him physically at least five times. In Genesis 12, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to, to your descendants, I'll give this land. And he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. Okay? So, to me, that's not a vision. The Lord appeared to him and he built an altar. Okay? Then in, in 14, he meets Melchizedek, who's a type of Christ. In Genesis 15, it says, He brought him outside to look at the heavens. That means he was physically there and took him outside and showed him the heavens and said, This is how great your descendants will be. In Genesis 18, the Lord appeared to him amongst the uh, terebinth trees at Mamre and prophesied that he'll fall pregnant. But the fifth time, fifth being the number of grace, he's actually called the angel of the Lord. So that's in Genesis 22. And it's the story that we all know when Moses, uh, sorry, when Abraham had taken his son up to Mount Moriah to sacrifice him. And as he's about to do that, Genesis 22, verse 6, it says, So Abraham took the wood of the... Um, the offering, no, verse 11, sorry. And it says, But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. So that was the angel of the Lord. That was Jesus. And then in verse 15, it says, The angel of the Lord called a second time out of heaven. And then he said, By myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you've done this and not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, the sand on which is the seashore, and your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. Isn't that interesting? Because the very thing that was prophetic about what Jesus was going to do, be the only son who was actually going to die, it was actually the Lord who was calling out to him and saying, no, you don't need to do that because I'm actually going to be the beloved son who will actually die for the sins of the world. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I just think that's just, that's mind-blowing. Now, and then, of course, Abraham says, calls, that, calls him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. In Genesis um, 32, Jacob wrestles with a man. And it doesn't, doesn't necessarily, necessarily say there that was, it was the angel of the Lord, but there is a way of finding out that it was. So let's have a look at Genesis 32, 24. And it says, he, he took them and sent them over by the brook. And, and then verse 24, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Okay, so here's a man who's actually wrestling with him. And then when we go to verse 28, it says, and he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you've struggled with God and with men and prevailed. Okay, so he's saying God with men. And Jacob said, tell me your name. And, why, and then he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. And then in verse 30 it says, so Jacob called the name Peniel. He says, I have seen God face to face and my life was preserved. I've seen God face to face. Who did he see? He saw Jesus because it couldn't, right? Now, this is really interesting. Come with me to Genesis 48. This is when... Jacob, who's now Israel, is um, blessing Joseph, and he's just yeah he's getting near the end of his life. And um, 
Actually, sorry, before that, I, I, let's go to another scripture, Hosea. Keep your finger there. Hosea 12, 2 to 4. So, Hosea 12, 2 to 4. It says, The Lord also brings a charge against, charge against Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his deeds. He will recompense him. Recompense him. He took his brother by the heel, so he's talking about Jacob, in the womb, and in his strength he tr struggled with God. Yes, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. Capital A. So now we know that he said it was man, he said it was God, we actually know it was the angel of the Lord that it was actually Jesus that he, he struggled with. And he wept and sought favour from him and he found him in Bethel and he spoke and there he spoke to us. We was talking about the angel. Right, now come to Genesis 48 and verse 15. Now, now, now this starts getting interesting because we start seeing some of the attributes of Jesus coming out with this angel. So he blessed Joseph this is Jacob is blessing Joseph and he said God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked the God who has fed me all my life long to this day the angel who has redeemed me from all evil <laughs> bless the lads let my name be named upon them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into the multitudes in the first in the midst of the earth do you know that's the first mention of the world redeem in the in the bible the first time that we see the word redeem is with the angel of the lord why is that <laughs> because jesus christ came, was going to come and redeem the whole world and he's saying that this is this is the god who fed me who looked after me who shepherded me who went before my fathers abraham and isaac he was around with them he was there for me he's the angel who redeemed me from all evil and then he was blessing them in the name of the lord amen isn't that awesome <laughs> it's so, so cool our redeemer was walking on this earth with the forefathers and blessing them and looking after them and he continued to do it when he came to this earth in human flesh and he continues to do it today amen that's, I just found this so fascinating because, yeah, until then it was like, well, Jesus was there and he's with the Father, but then, you know, he came, you know, no, he was walking on this earth and interacting with man and mediating between God and man right from the beginning of time. It's just so awesome. Isaiah 63. Are you enjoying this today? I hope you're enjoying as much as I am. <laughs> Isaiah 63, 7 to 12. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all the Lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness towards the house of Israel, which he bestowed on them before, according to his mercies, according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not lie. So he became their saviour. In their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them. <laughs> That's not just any angel, amen? That's the angel of the Lord. It's Jesus. It says, in their affliction, he was afflicted. And, in, and he saved them and he redeemed them. And then it says, he bore them and carried them all the days of old. They rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned against them as an enemy and fought against them. And then he remembered the days of old. What did he remember? The covenant. <laughs> He said, he remembered the days of old, the covenant, and Moses and his people saying, where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? And where is he who put the Holy Spirit within them, who led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, divide, dividing the water before them to make for himself an everlasting name? <laughs> Moses knew who that was. Amen. He knew who the angel of the Lord was. And he said, where, where, where is he? You know why? Because he'd already met him back in with the burning bush. And uh, if you read in Exodus um, 3, 2, that uh, he sees this bush bur burning and an angel calls to him and he actually meets Jesus because he says, what, what is your name? And he says, call, say that I am the I am. And Jesus identifies it later when he says, as Abraham was, I am. So basically he was saying to them, the guy you're talking to right now is the guy who was talking to Moses in the burning bush. And they couldn't cope with it. They just couldn't cope with it. In, uh, 
And that's in, if you're looking for references, that's in John 8, 58. So John MacArthur, in the MacArthur Study Bible, comments that the angel of the Lord is literally the messenger of Yahweh who is in context, turns out to be the Lord himself talking to Moses. Charles Spurgeon book, The Treasury of David, he comments that the angel of the Lord in Psalm 34-7 is the covenant angel, the Lord Jesus, at the head of all the bands of heaven and surrounds with his army the dwelling of the saints. And that scripture 34-7 is the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. What a good scripture for right now. Amen. The same angel of the Lord who encamped around the children of Israel and delivered them is the same Jesus who's actually going to deliver our nation from these fires. Hallelujah. Same one. So the, you'll, the angel of the Lord is also known through scripture as the angel of God or the angel of his presence or the angel of the covenant. And it was worshipped and offered a sacrifice to. He led Israel. He showed them favor. He made and kept a covenant with Abraham and Israel. He's a redeemer, a savior, a provider, protector, and deliverer. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Got some more. Judges. He actually turns up with Gideon. And so Judges 6 and uh, verse 12. So it's funny, I don't know about you, but you know, when I was younger, I sort of skipped over this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, there was an angel there and appeared to him and spoke to him. And then I realized there was actually Jesus. And so in um, Judges 6.12, it says, The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. I used to read that and think, okay, an angel spoke to him and said, The Lord is with you. No, the Lord was there and said, I am with you. <laughs> that was the difference. <laughs> And, you know, we knew that, you know, that he was, you know, threshing in the, down, then down in the mill and hiding. And so Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why is all this happening to us? Where are all the miracles which the Father told us about? And saying, Did I not bring, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? He didn't realize he was talking to the very person who did bring them out of Egypt. <laughs> but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivers us into the hand of the Midians. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midians. Have I not sent you? Ignore, yeah, he, he was saying, Well, look, what are you doing about it? He said, No, I've actually empowered you to do something about it. And so now, now it's interesting because if you, if you, you may not pick this up, but in verse 13 it says, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, and it's lowercase l o r d, okay? And then he says, if the Lord is with us, uppercase L-O-R-D. The lowercase L-O-R-D is actually when you're calling a man Lord. So it's, it's the word Adoni or Adown, which actually, when, if, if a person, you know, there have been kings and lords on this earth. So if, you, if they were calling a man Lord, it's actually the word in lowercase. So he says to the man if the Lord, now um, the other one, capitals, is Yahweh. He says to the man, if, if Jesus or Yahweh had been here, this is what would have happened. But then, in verse 14, it says, The Lord, Yahweh, turned to him and said, Go in this might. So he realized in the end that the person that he was talking about was actually the person he was talking to. <laughs> So then, because he offers up a sacrifice in 22:24, and it says, Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And so Gideon said, Alas, O Lord my God, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And then the Lord said to him, by this stage it's all Yahweh, he said to him, Peace be with you, do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. And to this day, it still stands in those places. So because they knew that if you see God to face to face, no man can do that. Even Moses couldn't do it. He was afraid because he'd seen God face to face. He thought he was going to die. Jesus said, no, it's not going to happen. Because Jesus was able to appear to men in human likeness. And it was God through the, God the Son who was appearing to them. And he was able to do them without that being a problem to them. Amen? And so he recognized that. So he called the place 
Um, he, oh, yeah, that's right. And then, and then it goes on. Oh, okay, so, sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So then still in Judges 13, when it comes to Samson, do you know that Samson's parents met the angel of the Lord? They actually met Jesus. So we're getting, we're getting near the end of it. So, and there's so much more. Do you know there's 41 references to the angel of the Lord in the, in the Old Testament? So please do a study. You'll, you'll, you'll see even more. Um, so in Judges 13.6, it says, The woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God. Very awesome. <laughs> They've worked these days. <laughs> I saw Jesus. He was awesome. <laughs> But I didn't ask him where he was from, and he didn't tell me. So the husband says, asked the Lord, send him back. You, know, you revealed yourself to, him, to my wife. What about me? I want to have that experience. And so in, in verse 10, it says, Then the woman ran in haste and told her husband, and he said, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me. So then um, Manoah, who was um, Abraham's father, in verse 17, it says, then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, what is your name that when your words come to pass, we may honor you? And look at what he says. The angel said to him, why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? <laughs> Where have we heard that before? <laughs> Isaiah 9, 6. <laughs> His name will be called Wonderful, Prince of Peace, Almighty God. So um, in Judges, uh, Gideon calls him Peace. He says, I've seen the Lord, I'm going to build an altar, the Lord is peace. And he, Samson asks him, Samson's parents ask him, what's his name? And he says, why are you asking me? Because it is wonderful. And so Isaiah 9, 6, his name will be called Wonderful Prince of Peace, Everlasting God. So he's our redeemer, he's our saviour, our provider, our protector, our deliverer. He's the covenant keeper. He's the one who leads and guides us. He shows us favour. And we worship you, Lord. He's the Alpha and Omega, the one appointed as a mediator between God and man from everlasting to everlasting. He was always there, right from the start, walking with Adam and Eve, walking through history with um, you know, the Israelites, with Gideon, with the Abraham, with Moses, and uh, you know, even Samuel. You know, if you read, you, know, you remember the account where um, Samuel, uh, when he was a little boy, and he, and he heard the Lord um, calling out to him. And so he ran to Eli and said, was that you? And then he came back. If you actually look, he, and when Eli says, um, next time he does that, respond to him and say, Lord, here I am. And when you read that account, do the study for yourself. When you read the account, it says, and the Lord appeared in the doorframe. So the, the first few times he was calling out to him, but the last time he appeared, which means he was there, standing there in the doorframe. So Samuel had an account with Jesus Christ. Amen. Moses, uh, Job had an account with Jesus Christ. Even Balaam and his donkey had an account with the angel of the Lord. That was Jesus that was there, stopping him from trying to go up and curse the children of Israel. And he let him go. He said, but you're going to bless them. Why? Because they were looking at the cross who the angel of the Lord was actually going to be upon. It all just comes together. Amen. I love how the Holy Spirit does that. It's all there. And so Jesus came in human likeness in the Old Testament, and then he came in human flesh. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this wonderful teaching. We thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you didn't just come in the, the New Testament. You didn't just come 2,000 years ago. You came right at the beginning of time. Lord, you were there in creation. You were walking with Adam and Eve. You were right there, right throughout the Old Testament, interacting with humans and, and Lord, just um, being that mediator between the Father and, his, and the human race. And, Lord, the attributes that we see, even in the Old Testament, that Jacob knew you. He knew you as, as a shepherd. He knew you as a redeemer. He knew you as someone who provided for him and Abraham and Isaac. And, Lord, it became a thing in their family that they knew about the angel of the Lord and, it was the, and that you were the one that guided them and led them and, and helped them and provided for them. And we thank you, Lord, that, that you were back there then and you're still with us now. And, Lord, even in Hebrews it talks about a cloud of witnesses and some of those witnesses knew what it was to have you there, Lord God, and, and 
and looking after them the same way that you look after us. And we just thank you, Lord God. It just gives us so much more confidence in you and what you've done because you've done it from age. You've done it from, from ancient of days, Lord God. From the day that this earth was created, you've been right there. Lord, not just up in heaven and waiting for when you'd be, um, you'd be sent to die for the sins of the world, but Lord, right here amongst us, walking amongst us, interacting with us, encouraging us, encouraging um, Gideon that he would um, take on the enemies of Israel. And so we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you again, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And everybody said, Amen.